This is the existing table for my boat. And I've taken it apart to clean that up. I started sanding the first board. You can see it does look pretty good. The sanders that I'm using are these two. Um, I watched some videos and people are using rotary sanders and I've always been taught that you have to sand with the grain. So a rotary sander doesn't make any sense to me, um, but the results were pretty nice. So I have a lot of uh, work to do, prep to do before I even start assigning any kind of finish work to it. But you can see the, it's a nice table. It does come up like this. And then there's a clever little method on the bottom that there's a board comes across here it pivots out and then it holds this guy up I can't reach it um, and then it has the piano hinges here and I've taken the piano hinge off of that one and this board's turned out fairly good Quite a bit more sanding to do on that and this is the um well i guess we would call this the the four so it is a slow process you take the wood and you sand it and you sand it and you sand it and of course you have to unassemble it or disassemble it and then sand it and sand it and keep sanding it and I have a long way to go obviously there's no sponsorship here but I do like the Ryobi or Ryobi and I'm particularly fond of this guy which is a relatively new purchase because the um, sandpaper actually just fastens with Velcro type of uh, fastening to the bottom. Whereas this guy, it's a bit of a pain to assemble it and fasten it correctly and it seems to come out a bit. Uh, but I like that, that guy. Anyway, just a quick progress shot to show that getting a few more pieces um, uh, to uh, start to get the varnish off. I still have a long way to go as far as sanding goes but it's uh i think it is actually starting to look pretty good often it helps to have some sort of record of how <laughs> the pieces are assembled so that i can put them back the way they're supposed to be so this is in a previous video i showed this little piece. I didn't show this little piece because I couldn't, but this rotates out to hold the uh, uh, leaf when it's in place and then when it's supposed to um, be down, then this little piece slides back in. But I just wanted to do a quick video to show myself mostly what these pieces look like that I'm disassembling so I know how to put it back together properly. There's a nice uh, washer on both sides of this to help it rotate. So it looks like whoever, uh, well, my friend Louis Norris, uh, who has since passed, uh, did this for me the last time. And it looks like he didn't take it apart. He just uh, varnished on top of it. Well, I'll take it apart and get that varnish off of there. I'm getting close to finishing the sanding. You know, you sand and then you sand and then you sand and then you sand some more. So I'm prepped for the next phase, which will be, I have some good materials here, the tack cloth on the left. And then I use the uh, gloves to keep the oil from my hands 
off of the wood. And then of course the interlux uh, varnish and a uh, interlux uh, thinner. So the first several coats that go on will be very, very, very thin. But before that happens, I have teak cleaner parts one and two, which I think are pretty important too. And then uh, I have a little brush there that I use to brush the dusted, the uh, sand, uh, the wood off of the pieces rather than using my hand to wipe it off. Uh, I'm not claiming to be any kind of an expert. I'm just sharing how I, how I uh, approach this. And you know, one of the secrets that I use that worked has worked for me is that it's not a rush. I take my time, do it right, and take my time again and go back and try to do it even better so that over the course of several weeks of sanding, I should be ready to move on to the next phase and I'm all set up with my uh, pieces there uh, in order to do that. You know, it's, it's the middle of September 2024 right now and it's the end of the season for the boat anyway. So there's no great loss by not having this in the um, cockpit to uh, set anything on because yeah, probably not going to be up in the cockpit anyway now. Um, my goal is possibly achievable is to get the sanding completed before the middle of next week where I'll go back out and spend a week or so on the boat and let the dust settle as much as possible here in my workshop. And then uh, maybe in a couple of weeks when I get back, I'll be ready to start actually uh, varnishing, uh, preparing for the varnishing. But um, I think I might not make my deadline. All right, so now the second coat of Semco Teak Cleaner has been put on. It lightened it up a little bit. It got pretty dark on that first one, but on the second one, it's, and the instructions say that it will lighten it up. If I didn't kill that ivy down there with the Semco, I don't suspect it would, but anyway, I can see a few spots where I uh, missed some varnish, which is not good. So I'm gonna let this stuff dry and uh, I'm back in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be on the boat for a couple of weeks, but I'll come back home and uh, it should be ready for lunch. All right, so the next phase is the tack cloths to wipe down all of the wood so that it has the least amount of little dust particles on it. Can't get rid of all of them, I'm sure. But yesterday I did the uh, Semco parts one and parts two. And that worked out pretty good. It's a little scary at first because it gets really dark. And then the places where the hinges go, the stainless steel hinges go. I didn't really do a lot of removal there because there's a little lip there between the surface. There's two surfaces here and I didn't really want to destroy the second surface. It's just a slight little lip there. You can't see. It's on the top here. Let's see. A little bit at the top and then down here at the bottom. That's where the hinge goes, but it fits in there. I didn't want to grind down the top part. So anyway, this is the next phase, is to tack down all of the, with the tack cloths, with a professional tack cloth there, and uh, use that to pick up as much little particles that are on the boards as possible. But uh, this is going to sit for couple weeks while I'm out on the East Coast on the boat. 
hopes that the uh, dust will uh, be settled more so than uh, we have right now. And uh, we got the little robot cleaning the floor. I'll uh, use a, a carpet shampooer to uh, clean this um, nice rubber floor that I have in my workshop. Then I'll get some more of the dust out and a lot of the dust will settle hopefully over the next two weeks. And then on to the next phase. Okay, back in the saddle. Um, my first coat is about 50% Interlux 333 brushing liquid and 50% uh, Interlux Schoner varnish. And so it's a very light coat on these boards. They're still wet right now. And I will show that. They look pretty good for the first coat. They're still wet. They'll get better. And then I have the other pieces. First coat, again, just the varnish. 50 50. 50 thinning, 50% thinning oil, 50% varnish, or approximately. And that's the first base coat on the one side let it dry for a day put the other sides uh, pieces get them varnished and then let them dry for a day and then I will go on to I use uh, steel wool preferably bronze or brass copper whatever <clears throat> that doesn't rust although it doesn't matter here when I was on the boat last week uh, you know, some of those pieces do um, stay on the deck somewhere and they rust so it's not a good idea to use um, anything but a non-rusting type of uh, abrasive. I don't use sandpaper I just scruff it up with uh, steel wool and um, like I said I'm no expert I'm just sharing how I do it. So this is the day after the first coat of varnish was put on it uh, was mostly thinner, 50% thinner, maybe a little bit more on these uh, pieces of wood. And they look fairly nice, uh, a little darker than they were originally. That might be because of the thinner. But uh, um, I looked at the video before, you could see little bubbles, some few spots, but they're gone now. Um, and I used these disposable brushes. Uh, I use this one to put the varnish on, but then I use the littler one to go around the edges uh, that didn't, now the brush didn't have any varnish on it, but I just put it, used it to go around the edges in the event that there was possibly some drip let's see if any of the varnish had dripped so just along the edge I just wanted across the edge there and with a fresh brush just in case there's any uh, dripping you know it should uh, stop the drips from happening with the amount of varnish that's there which is 50% shouldn't probably get any drips now I know in a previous video I said I was going to take these off, but I decided not to because the, what's happened is these, these screws weren't coming out. And so that's a good reason to just leave them um, in. That's not a, not a big deal anyway. So this is the other boards. Now this is, this is the actual tabletop that pivots up. It has the lip on the end, and I didn't take the screws out here because when I was taking the screws out of here, I, one of them just stripped. And so I thought maybe it would be better not to uh, disassemble this little lip here and just leave it there. I think it's okay. Okay, now this is the bottom portion of the wood first time being 
stained with about 50%. I used the bronze wool, uh, which really wasn't necessary here. But what happens is on the boat, as I've said many times, is that steel wool rusts. If you don't get it all off the deck, you got some rust. So this is wet. All I did was the top that's exposed now, and then I used that small little one inch brush to go around and maybe if there's any sort of uh, drips to try to pick it up. And then these are the other pieces here. You can see it's still wet, but it uh, should dry better uh, looking. But this is just the first coat. The bronze wool did a really nice job of smoothing it out and it provides sort of an abrasive uh, rough finish for future coats of varnish so it's a good thing to do but it's certainly less um, compact than steel wool is so there's a lot of little pieces so before I put this coat on I had to do the definitely had to do the um, tack rags to get the any possible little bronze pieces that were left to get them off. So I've mixed the varnish and the thinning or brushing liquid about 25% <coughs> thinning liquid and 75% uh, varnish so it's starting to look a little bit better. I do spend a lot of time with that bronze wool. I'm trying to get, you know, everything nice and smooth. I am seeing some bubbles in here to right now, but uh, I think it'll maybe level out as it dries. If not, then I'll just use some more bronze wool. I'm definitely not gonna use I'm going to get some regular steel wool. The bronze wool doesn't last very long. It's, I don't know, maybe flimsy would be the word, but it's just takes, it just kind of vanishes, <laughs> I guess is the best word. So starting to build this up. I'll probably put seven or eight, maybe nine coats on it. So you can see starting to get a nicer little finish. The first coat was 50-50, varnish to thinning liquid, and the second coat now is 25% thinning liquid and 75% varnish. So I've got a long way to go, but it's starting to look nicer anyway. This is definitely a lot of work. This is the first coat of 100% varnish on this side. And it's good. You know, it finishes, it dries differently. Uh, I was uh, waiting the 24 hours, but uh, you know, you wait the 24 hours and then you start prepping and then it's uh, you know, 26 or 27 hours before you're ready to put the next coat on. And then you got to wait 24 hours from that. So I took the old blue tape off and I went and bought some one inch tape, which is still too wide. So I had to cut all of that tape. It would have been nice if the blue tape had little lines on it indicating where uh, 5 eighths was or 9 sixteenths or 7 sixteenths. That would have been beneficial for me. I don't know how that works for most people just trying to, um, you know, protect an edge. And these are the other boards. First coat of full varnish. 100% and then uh, the 
steel wool, scruffs it down quite a bit, and then I put some more coats on. I'm thinking, well, this is a long process. My buddy Louis Norris did this for me, took it home, brought it back, all varnished. I think he charged me two hundred dollars, and uh, I, it was quite a gift. I didn't realize it at the time, but uh, there's a tremendous amount of time and effort that goes into making this as good as I can. I don't claim to be a professional varnisher by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but it's a lot of work. So, got a lot of brushes. Not enough, I'm sure I'll have to do more. But I also take the good use of the uh, yogurt uh, containers, the glass containers, and as I took my pieces apart, I put them in separate containers. So as I, hopefully as I go to put it back together, I'll have all of the pieces there that I can use for um, reassembly without you know looking through every single one. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? So I think that's a good method too.